welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to do something a little different. Me and my husband went to Indigo uh, about a week ago and I decided, I can't remember where I first saw this video. I'll have to go back to my videos and see if I can find who I got this idea from and tag them. But the idea was that my hubby chooses out the video, the videos, the books that I read for a week. So for the month of December, I not only have my own TBR that I want to do, which you'll be able to see in my next video, but I've also added three books to my December TBR. And yeah, so I will kind of show you the video of when we went to Indigo and then I'll come back and talk about the books that he chose. Serious, I have that book. <laughs> well, at least I got something that's uh, that you have. did is we kind of browsed around Indigo, we looked at books, he didn't really have an idea of, I guess he sort of had an idea of what he wanted to pick for me and we kind of went from there so we browsed around Indigo and then we picked the three books and then in another video I'll show you I gave him about five 
four to five books that I already own that I will add to my TBR list before the end of the year. And I'll kind of show you that book that he chose also. So the first book that he chose, actually this was the first one that he grabbed, was Daniel Steele, The High Notes. So this is one of her newer books. I've never read Daniel Steele books before. He just knew this author because he said his mom used to read Daniel Steele all the time. I've never read a Daniel Steele book. And this is about... Yeah, this looks like this might be a quickish read for me. So this book says... Heartfelt novel from New York Times bestselling author Daniel Steele. A young woman with an unforgettable voice fights for the freedom to pursue her dreams. Irish Cooper has been... Uh, has been sinning ever since she can remember. She was hitting the high notes like no one else. When she was 12, her father convinces the owner of a bar in Lake City, Texas to let her perform, and she stuns the audience. In the ensuing years, never staying anywhere for long, father and daughter move from one dusty town to the next. Iris's passion for music grows every time she takes the mic in another roadhouse. But it's not an easy life for Iris with her father in charge and using her income to pay for gambling, women, and booze. When she starts to tour at age 18, she takes on a real manager. Yet he exploits her too, and the sinners and the musicians she travels with are really the only family she has. It is they who give Iris the courage to finally fly free, leave the tour, and follow her own dreams. After years of enduring the hardship of the road, exploitation, and abuse, and abuse to do what she loves, Iris's big chance comes as her talent soars. But at the top, at last, Iris still has to fight every step of the way. In the high notes, Daniel Steele delivers an inspiring, inspiring story about finding the strength to stand up for yourself and your dreams, no matter what it takes. So this actually sounds like. A really good book and it's like I said this is my first Daniel Steele book so I'm really excited about this one to read this one I'll put that for now the other book that my husband picked was one of the first books that he grabbed I guess when he walked in so when you walk in the store they have like all the popular TikTok books books newer books that are on sale etc and he grabbed They Both Die at the End by Adam Severia. I have seen this book all over Bookstagram, all over TikTok, all over YouTube, and apparently this is a really, really good book. And now I found out that there's a sequel to this book called They Both Live at the End. So if I like this book, I might have to go and pick up they both live at the end so this book we're here we're here at last friend our, our we're here at last friend Inc are collectively sorry for their loss of you our deepest sympath sympathies extend to those who love and those who will never meet you we hope you find a new friend of value to spend your final hours with today on September 5th, a little after midnight, death cast calls Mateo Torres and Rufus to give them some bad news. They're going to die today. Mateo and Rufus are total strangers, but for different reasons. They're both looking to make a new friend on their end day. The good news, there's an app for that. It's called Last Friend. And through it, Rufus, uh, Rufus and Mateo are about to meet up for one last great adventure. To live a lifetime in a single day. Discover the story that reminds us that there's no life without death, no love without loss, and that it's possible to change your whole world in one day. So, and I opened the, uh, I want to show you the inside cover of this. With like the clock and stuff, it just... They have no. Honestly, this cover is just 
so pretty. I love this cover. It says, with a new original short story and author letter. This is apparently a collector's edition. So this book, I believe, came... Uh, yeah, actually this book came out in 2017, which is interesting. This is not a newer book, but it has become a very popular book talk book. And then like I said, the new one, they both live at the end, just came out, I believe, a few months ago. So if I like this one, then I'll have to read the other one. The other book, because my husband knows I like thrillers, horrors, all that jazz, and he knows I like Stephen King. I've only read one Stephen King book, and that is it. I have a ton of other Stephen King books on my shelf, like 10 plus. Most of them I got from thrift stores because I wanted to collect his books because I know he has so many. I might have to do a Stephen King vlog where I just read Stephen King books for like a week or something in the new year just to get through my Stephen King books. But my second ever Stephen King book that I'm going to read is his newest one, Fairy Tale. Okay, so Fairy Tale by Stephen King. Charlie Ritt Red looks like a regular high school kid. Great at baseball, football, a decent student, but he carries a heavy load. His mom was killed in a hit and run accident when he was seven. A grief drove his dad to and grief drove his dad to drink. Charlie learned how to take care of himself and his dad. When he was seventeen he meets a dog named Radar. And her agent master Howard. In a big house at at the top of a big hill was a lock shed in the backyard. Sometimes strange sounds emerge from it. Charlie starts to do odd jobs for Mr. Uh, Bod Bowditch and loses his heart to Radar. Then when he when uh, Bow Bowditch dies, he leaves Charlie a cassette tape tell and telling a story no one would believe. What? Baldich knows and has kept secret all his life. All his long, all his long life is that inside the shed is a portal to another world. Early in the pandemic, Kim asked himself, "What could you write that would make you happy?" As if my imagination had been waiting for the question to be asked, I saw a vast deserted city. Deserted but I alive. I saw empty streets, the haunted buildings. A gargoyle had lying overturned in the street. I saw smashed statues of what I didn't know but I eventually found out. I saw a huge sprawling palace with glass towers so high their tips pierced the clouds. Those images released the story I wanted to tell. I'm actually super excited about this book. It sounds like one, I don't really know because like I said, I haven't really read, read any of his other books except for it, but this sounds like a very different book from all the Stephen King books that I have. So I'm actually super excited to read this one before the end of the year. This one I might leave last and read the other two first. I haven't really decided yet. Let's take a look. Okay, it's between those two, so now I'll narrow it down to... Which one, Madison? Which one? Which one? That one? We choose this one. What did you choose? Kingdom of the Wicked. Okay. 
So that's the one that Nathan. Why is it between those two? You might not actually like this one, but I chose it. You don't think I like that one? I don't know. It's a uh, seems like a drama in a way, but in a creepy way. That's why. This one looks like a killer one, but we choose this one. Okay, and the last book that my hubby chose for me that will be that I will read for a week. Not necessarily finish it, but I can read it. Is I'm actually super excited. He chose this book for me, Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Manis Cal Calco. So I believe this is the first book of. I want to say there's at least three other books in this series, as far as I know. This was one of the books that I got. On book outlet so this was probably in one of my other videos when I did my book outlet unboxing by the way I'm still doing the giveaway when I hit 500 subscribers on YouTube I will give away the two books that I got as duplicates by accident from book outlets maybe I'll link that video down below so you can Go check out that book outlet video and the books that I want to give away. Tell your friends, take people, show people this video, have them subscribe. If you love books, you get, I'm going to, I think I'll do two winners and I'm super excited for that. So hopefully I can do the giveaway sometime in the new year and yeah, I can give away two books. So definitely check out that video. I will put the link down below so you can see what video I mean. And yeah, so let's see. Amelia and her twin sister, Victoria, are witches who live secretly among humans, avoiding notice and persecution. One night, Victoria misses dinner service at the family's renowned restaurant. Amelia soon finds the body of her beloved twin desecrated beyond belief. Devastated, Amelia sets out to find her sister's killer and to seek vengeance at any cost, even if it means using dark magic that's been long forbidden. Amelia meets Wrath, one of the wicked prin princes of hell she has been warned against in tales since she was a child. Wrath claims to be on Amelia's side. Task by his master was solving a series of women's murders on the island. But when it comes to the wicked, nothing is as it seems. So I kind of like... I like how they do this at the start of the pages with kind of the... Let's see if I can see what you can... Do that. And then I also like... You have... A map. So in front of here you have the map. And I like the purple and black. So that's the map in here. So let me see if I can find quickly. I think I said it was about two or three. At least three probably. Um, let's see. I think I did that. So the newest book is, so Kingdom of the Wicked came out in 2020. Then the second book is Kingdom of the Cursed. And the newest one is Kingdom of the Fears. So that would be so three books in the series. Plus, apparently, she has another series called the Stalkin Jack, the Ripper series. Interesting. Okay. So if I like this book, there's only two more books. So the second one is. So 
So that's the second book. And then the third one is... The newest one, Kingdom of the Feared, which looks like... It's on a Cyber Monday deal. Ha! Ah, I mean, I don't need that. So like I said before, one thing that I find personally to me, if I start a series and it's not finished and then I have to wait like forever for the next book to come out, it drives me insane, like completely insane. I would rather read series that are finished than have to wait for the next book because some books in series take like two to three years to come out. Like, and what I've said like before is one of the other books just came out that I was reading that was a series that I got in not book outlet, but I believe it was called, oh, Owl Crate. It was an Owl Crate subscription box. And it came with one or three, two or three books every month. I haven't got a subscription from them in a while. I just kind of canceled it because I would get the books every month and I couldn't keep up with them. Um, Girls of Paper of Fire and Girls of Fate and Fury were the two books that were already out. But then there, the latest one, Girl, no, Girls and Fate of, of Fate and Fury is the last book in the series. Sorry. So, I read the first two books. It's by Jenny... No, I lied. It's on my bookshelf, but I'll just pull it up here and show you. Uh, Girls of Paper and Fire, it's called. Never heard of this book before. The only reason why I got it is because I got it in my Owl Crate subscription box. And I wanted to show you guys yeah by Natasha Gann so this is the one I'm talking about then the second one is Girls of Storm and Shadow yeah, Girls of Storm and Shadow, and then the last one is Girls of Fate and Fury. Girls of Fate and Fury just came out in November. Yeah, November of last year. I read the first two books, and I want to read the Girls of Fate and Fury, but <laughs> my brain's, I kind of feel like I have to read the first two again. So I'm going to have to do a reread of that sometime in the new year. But I am super excited for these books. I also have a book haul, Christmas Eat, a December TBR vlog, shop with me kind of video that I am going to film. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Comment below. Let me know what you think. If you like this video or you liked um, that I got someone else. By the way, my husband is, my husband doesn't read, so he's kind of, he kind of went by what I like, what he knows I like, and kind of what he knew, so he's not a big reader. So if you like this video, I thought I might take one of my friends, who again is not a big reader, again, probably not until the new year, because I have so many unread books that I need to get through. Maybe I'll give myself a limit, maybe if I can get through like 20 plus books or more, maybe March sometime, I'll take my friend to the bookstore and I'll let her pick up two or three books for me to read and then I'll do the same thing. I'll pick some books off my shelf that I have and she can pick a book from that. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to stick around. And I'll see you guys in the next video.